Hi, my name is Bjorn and this is a video tutorial explaining how to use the Yeti plugin for Maya. And I'll show how to set up a basic hair system. And um, and that's that's it for this tutorial, but it's, a, it's just a basic introduction to what you can do. Uh, this is one of the projects that I, uh, my first project using Yeti, which is the partially tranquilized brown bear. And uh, I'm not going to go into clumping and other cool things in this tutorial, but ideally you'd have that, like, you know, when a creature runs around in the forest and, and whatnot, then they'll, you know, get wet or the fur will clump towards the base of the creature. And uh, so there's a lot of different things you can do with the Yeti and it's really powerful. And um, in this tutorial, I'll just show how to set it up. So select your mesh and Click the Create Yeti node on Mesh. Now I'm going to rename this My Fur, just so I have everything under control. <laughs> and uh, if we go to the right, to the Attribute Editor, here you can find the Graph Editor, which is the core of Yeti. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the geometry. Then I'm going to use a scatter node to scatter out the points where the fur should protrude from. And then I'm going to use a grow node to give it some length. And if you click the little checkbox, the little green box inside the other box, you'll um, display this particular node layer. And you can see it makes a difference in the viewport too. So now I want to be more specific with how my hair looks. So I'm going to create a groom node on selected mesh. I'm going to rename this my groom. Now, in the attribute editor, you can see that there's a bunch of different options. Some of them are simulation, others are like symmetry, and you can add custom attributes. But for now, I'm just going to click on the plus icon and just draw out where I want my hair to protrude from. So this is just where it starts, uh, the slave work starts, just <laughs> placing out the strands where you want them to be. And this is not a symmetrical model, so I'm not going to use symmetry. There's a checkbox for that. Unfortunately, I posed this character before I, I did the groom, so. And the minus removes uh, the, the strands you put down, obviously. And if you hold the mouse over each of the icons out to the right, you can see what they are and what they do. Like the lift lifts up the hair. And that's a good thing. If you, if you um, comb the hair down so that it's lying on top of the mesh then um, it will look weird in the render so you might want to just raise it up a bit and that's the lift function now moving along select your fur node or my fur as we named it and go to your input grooms which is here and this is where we import our newly created groom that way they're connected so i'm just going to go to the yeti tree graph editor and import the groom like that just double click on the import node and change it to groom and then plug it into the grow node now it doesn't show right away so you have to go into your groom and turn up the radius of influence and that way you'll see the strands uh, appear as um, small dark gray strands around your you know the points you put out and by doing this, you have a pretty nice preview of where the hair is going to be, and uh, you can be more specific with your groom. So I'm just going to uh, groom some things here. Also, if you go down uh, in the groom, there's a custom attribute called length. If you double click it, you can tweak the length. You can make it longer, shorter, or you can uh, go into uh, smooth mode and smooth it. And here you can change the, uh, the the strength of the brush. So if you feel like it's it's getting out of hand, you can turn down the uh, the power of the brush, so to speak. So this is a real punk monk. I'm just going to see if I can <laughs> make it less noisy. And this is the smooth function. You see how I just changed it to smooth, All right? So I'm going to use the comb function and that basically gives you the ability to uh, 
to point the strands in a specific direction. It's not super accurate, but uh, if you put time into it, you can make it look pretty good. And this is when it goes down and lies on top of the, of the base mesh. It's a good idea to just give it a little lift, just to, well, not have it lie directly on top exactly, because then it will look really strange. Because the hair strands are actually just planes that are extruded and always facing the camera. Now, what I did was I created a comb node and I plucked both uh, the groom and the hair node into it and made it visible by clicking the little square. And you can see that the, the hair follows the groom the way we groomed it. So if I render this out, we will see that um, it looks like a hundred year old man or something. I don't know. The, the hair strands are one pixel in width and in, infinitely thin, almost. So this is pretty useless unless, of course, you have a sewer computer and can just, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't try to cover a head with the hair like this. So um, you can do this. You can add a width node to your groom and as you can see uh, I'm just going to activate it like so if you double click it you can see that it holds uh, some standard values and those are usually okay it really depends on your scale so if you're working really small you want to change this to 0.005 or something like that but uh, in my case it's actually I think I'll go with this and it's something you need to test out so now I'm just going to render this and test and see how it works but first let's look at the shader and this is just a quick tip uh, not Yeti related as such and I'm using V-Ray so I'm using a default blonde setup with the hair uh, shader and uh, as a little note if you have a texture file for your hair then um, of course you're going to use uh, Gamma Correct on it, but also you can use this node, which is a V-Ray Hair Sampler. And what you do is you plug it into the default color of your texture map, or your texture file, and then you plug that into the overall color of your um, fur or hair shader. Another thing you can do is you can um, create a ramp, like this, black and white. And you can fire that into the transparency of your uh, of your shader. This way, you can have the the points or the tips of your hair strands uh, become sort of translucent, and that's kind of faking subsurface scattering, which uh, I really wouldn't recommend for this amount of uh, geometry. All right, so it's getting there. It's still not looking too good, but uh, we'll fix that eventually. Uh, another cool feature is, um, or interesting feature rather, is this little checkbox in your groom that uh, says populate at mesh points. And what that enables you to do is just populate these strands wherever you want, regardless of the topology of your mesh, which is a very useful feature. And that's something you should do once you've blocked out the, the uh, overall um, fur or hair. And, and you do test renders and you see that, okay, there's holes here. That must mean that your radius of influence is, uh, is probably set right, but it um, but you need to, to place some extra strands to get that detail in there. So you need to test render now and then uh, to just, you know, look development is, is I guess, is the word. And uh, so it's nice now, it's, it's, it's okay. You can see it's really artificial. It has a curvature that's very um, perfect. And so you want to shuffle it up. What you can do if you want to be really specific, and it's something I actually, I did this a couple of times, it's you can go into component mode and you can use the individual vertex of the hair uh, influence strands. Um, you can move them around and, and really shuffle up your groom. Make it look really... Uh, random <laughs> so it's a very accurate way and very specific way to tell Yeti uh, how you want your groom to look 
but obviously it takes a lot of time but then again if you want a good result you need to really spend time on it but you know this isn't half bad for a 10 minute piece of work and if you're doing uh, maybe just a still image you can always paint over and cheat it so you can do something really quickly in Yeti and then you can make sure it looks really nice in pretty much no time it's just about getting the hang of uh, the workflow. So if you like my tutorial, go on to my homepage, which is linked uh, in the description underneath. And also I like gold, rubies and diamonds, uh, if, if that's something you have too much of.